Today on All About Canadian Books, we're going to British Columbia. But before I speak with author Maureen Brown Lee, if you love books and the stories behind them, please subscribe to my channel. Interviews are posted the second and fourth week of every month on Tuesdays. Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher. If you're new to the program, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. Today's guest is author Maureen Brownlee. And her fantastic book is Cambian, Cambian Blue. And it is a homage to resource towns, independent women, and local newspapers. Welcome, Maureen. Hi, Crystal. Thanks for having oh, me. Oh, good. <laughs> You're still there. Yay. It's my pleasure, Maureen. Just, and I'm really excited about talking about your book. But before we kind of get into some more questions, I'd love it if you could explain for people who haven't read the book, what your book is about. Always a tricky question. The book is about a small town in the interior of British Columbia that is about to lose well has lost its sawmill which is his major employer and the story follows three characters a young single mom a middle-aged newspaper publisher Either die or survive. Nobody really knows what will happen. And there's a resort developer who the local village council believes will be the savior of the town. Mm -hmm. And that that decision to pursue that path to survival has some real life consequences. Mm -hmm. And that's what the book is about. Now. If I hadn't have, have read your acknowledgments in the back, I would have thought, oh my goodness, these three characters, they're people Maureen knows. Like they are were so real to me. Like I just, I just adored them and was very invested in their journeys. In particular, your character, um, Nash Malone. And I was just wondering, Maureen, if you could tell me, tell us what. What is your relationship with with Nash? Because you certainly spent a lot of time developing him and and writing his journey. Even though my Nash Malone character was inspired by an actual person, mm -hmm. the, the character of Nash Malone is not in any way that mm -hmm. real person. Yes. One of the things that I tell people about the, the process of developing fictional characters mm -hmm. requires that you know everything about the character. So mm -hmm. you need to know them inside and out. And in real life, I wouldn't know something as basic as the favorite color of a person yeah. who didn't live in my house. So mm -hmm. the idea that I can that I can use a real person for a fictional character it, it just isn't true because you can't you you just have to make up so many details yeah. that are what make the character tick that they they bear no resemblance to the actual human being mm -hmm. the only pieces of nash that are from the actual character is that he went to spain he was did collect some junk and he did write poems other than that everything is my fabrication based on who I thought that character was going to be and what the story required. Mm -hmm. um, Alice Walker once said that writing fiction is a bit like quilting with scraps. <laughs> so I think that I think that in some ways, if you know me well, then you will find all kinds of quilt scraps from my life. You'll say, oh, that's you know, that's from a shirt I've seen her wear, or that's from her mom, or that's from her sisters. B but they are just pieces that I use to create the character that I need. Mm -hmm. And I'm always really interested, Maureen, like, you know, there's, 
with your story, you know, you, you, you said you drew inspiration from so many different areas. Um, but what came first to you? What was that little niggle that it's like, oh my gosh, I have to write this story. Was it a character? Um, was it an event? What, what was the catalyst for this novel? I was curious about how a person from the interior of British Columbia ended up in Spain. Uh, so that was, that was very much one of my curiosities. Mm -hmm. I was also very interested and still am in that, that transition that's being forced on so many small uh, rural towns yeah because they are very resource dependent and their resources are either being depleted or are no longer in vogue mm -hmm. and what that re and 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 provincial governments and i think this is true all across the country there's this great idea that tourism will be the savior of small towns and i recently saw an article that talked about called it gentrification, which we think of as an urban concept. Mm -hmm. And yet it, there, it, it really resonated. I thought, yes, that's exactly what's happening. So all of these small towns are being gentrified out of existence. So the people who have lived here for a long time can no longer afford to live here. Um, and, the, and the communities then change. And so I'm very, I'm, I don't have the answer to that, but I'm very interested in that transition. Okay. Now, you know, as a journalist, a, a, a publisher, you know, there's certainly a lot of similarities to Maggie and to yourself. Um, but as a journalist, how do you do you feel that this is um, like what impact would it would you say it has on the way you approach to writing a novel? Journalism gave me a uh, gave me an education in, in life and in writing and in people in stories. So journalism w was my was my education to, and it gave me access to a treasure trove of material. So I, I can I have a lot of I have a lot of scraps in my quilting basket that I can use. So that's what yeah that's what journalism gave me. And would it, so what's next for you then, Maureen? I am working on another novel set in the interior. I that's about all that I would say about it. I don't I I don't talk much about my projects that are in process. Uh, it doesn't doesn't seem to work for me to talk too much about it. I can talk yeah. myself right out of the story. Yeah. <laughs> no, I can relate. You keep it close. Keep it close. <laughs> mm. uh, and also, it changes as I'm as I'm work. What is? I don't really know for sure what it's going to be beyond a, a novel until well into the process. Okay. Maureen Brownlee. Thank you so much for being a guest on All About Canadian Books. I loved your book. I really did. And I'm going to hold it up again so everyone, oops, so everyone can see it. I highly, highly recommend it. I'll put links down below in the description box so you can uh, purchase a copy of uh, Cambium Blue. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Crystal, and thank you for what you're doing. The Canadian books need always need all the help they can get. Oh, it's Thanks a again. pleasure. I, I feel spoiled that I get to speak to so many fantastic authors. <laughs> Viewers, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to sub subscribe to my channel and um, appreciate your watching. Thanks, everyone.